Hey friends, welcome to Ivy's Fortress. I'm Ashante, your reading friend, and we have When My Cousins Come to Town, written by Angela Shante, illustrated by Keisha Morris. I love the illustrations of this book. I will say they are very contrasting, which means there is a clear difference of different shapes and color, uh, different shapes and different designs because the colors are so contrasting as you can see. So I hope you guys can really get to spend some time looking at the illustrations. They're very beautiful, very detailed, and they make me smile because they, they remind me of my summer times, my summer time when I was a kid with my cousins. So without further ado, we're gonna get reading. So, oh, don't forget our reading glasses. Slide those on. Awesome. When my cousins come to town. I don't know where that sound came from. Sophie's here with me. When my cousins come to town. Written by Angela Shante. Illustrated by Keisha Morris. And this is a West Margin Press published book. Every summer, my cousins come to visit me in the city. They arrive when school ends and leave after my birthday. My cousins and I like to travel uptown and downtown. All summer, we explore the city and end with the absolutely mandatory viewing of The Wiz, the best movie in all the movie worlds. Before they leave, they chip in to get me one amazing gift. This summer, I want something worth more than all the gifts in all the gift world. I want a nickname. I am the only cousin without one. This year is going to be different. I can feel it in my pinky. My oldest cousin, Lynn, shows up first. We call her Spice. Spice earned her nickname the day she messed up the curry chicken recipe. It turned out to be the spiciest curry chicken in all the curry chicken world. We drank a lot of water that summer. This summer, I asked Spice to teach me how to make coconut rice, but every batch comes out either mushy or crunchy. That's my same experience with making rice pudding. Jermaine arrives next. Everyone calls him Stone because he is the strongest. He earned his nickname while we were at the community pool. Some kids were picking on me for being small, so he chose me to be his partner in chicken fight. No one could knock the stone wall over and we won every battle. This summer, I eat twice as many fruits and vegetables as stone. Then I challenge my cousins to arm wrestle but lose every battle, even against my younger twin cousins. Shemaya and Eli are my twin cousins. We call them Star and DJE because they are the musical duo of the two. They earned nicknames the summer they burst into song on the subway. People were clapping and cheering them on and one person even gave them money. This summer, I practiced singing in the bathroom mirror, but the neighbors bang on the wall to get me to stop. Then I tried to beatbox at the dinner table, but only managed to spit all over the bowl of collard greens. Yuck. Cherise comes to town next week. We call her Swift. One summer, she challenged the fastest kid on our block to a race. She was two years younger than him, but left him in the dust. This summer, I challenged anyone I can find to a race, but I end up wheezing after one block. <sighs> Man, I feel that one. Natasha, who we call Giggles, arrives next. She's always cracking jokes. The first time we watched The Wiz, we had to keep pausing the movie because every few minutes, Giggles would say something funny about the scarecrow or the cowardly lion. Everyone was laughing so hard I could barely hear the movie. This summer, I practiced telling all the jokes I know, but they all fall flat. Probably because she's telling them to stuff the animals. That's a tough crowd. Wayne arrives last. We call him the ambassador because he knows how to keep the peace. One summer, we all wanted to go to different places. It turned into a huge argument. The ambassador was the only cousin to come up with a compromise that we could all agree on. 
This summer, I try to be the peacemaker whenever my cousins argue, but my voice is too small and no one hears me. Now that summer is almost over, I'm worried. My birthday is coming and I still don't have a nickname. I watch Star and DJE try out a new routine during every train ride, and I worry. The ambassador shows us how to read a subway map, and I worry. Swift outraces everyone on our block, and the next block, and the next block, and all on the blocks, and the, all of the blocks on the, and all, and on all the blocks in all the blocks world. <laughs> Ugh. And I watch him worry. I seem to be worried. Stone chooses Star to be his partner in chicken fight and then win every battle. I stand in the shallow end of the pool and worry. Giggles tells all new jokes all summer and even though I laugh, I still worry. Every night Spice prepares a tasty meal even when I scarf her food down. I worry. Before long, it's my birthday. The house is a flutter and everyone has a special job, except me. Stone takes charge of the streamers and putting anything up high. Swift runs back and forth to the bodega getting last minute supplies. Spice kicks everyone out of the kitchen so the cake doesn't fall. Star and DJ E are in charge of the music. The ambassador gets ready to greet people at the door. I know I'm supposed to be happy, but all I feel is dread. Once the party is over, my cousins go home and I will have to wait another year. No, that's not yours. I will have to wait another year for a nickname. Sophie's chewing on my daughter's basketball. Oh, you popped it. She's gonna be mad at me. Just before the first guest arrives, I see my cousins whispering among themselves. Something isn't right. I can feel it in my pinky. When the ambassador steps forward, I know it's something bad. We can't find your gift, he says. My eyes fill with tears, but we will keep looking for it until we find it. He tries to reassure me. I am a worried ball of tears and snot before I know it. I'd be sad if somebody lost my gift too, so that's reasonable. Then I hear Stone yell from the kitchen, I found it, I found it. We cram into the small kitchen to see what is going on. Wedged between the refrigerator and cabinet, I see a bright blue gift box. The broom won't grip it, DJ E whispers. Stone, try to use your hand, Spice writes. It doesn't fit, try the spatula, Stone groans. No, we need something small, sighs the ambassador. Like a smurf, giggle jokes. Then I had an idea. I am the smallest of my cousin. I'm not as small as a smurf, but maybe I can help. Let me try, I say. Into the crack my arm goes. I feel around and around. I stretch out each finger until my pinky touches something. I feel something, I yell. I shimmy deeper into the crack. I wrap my hand around the box and pull. Everyone starts cheering like I have a gold ticket in my hand. Stone sweeps me, into, sweeps me onto his shoulders and parades me through the house. Then everyone sings Happy Birthday by Stevie Wonder. Happy birthday to Smurf. Happy birthday to Smurf. Happy birthday. She got her nickname. Before we sit down to watch The Wiz, I open my birthday card and gift. Inside the box is a stuffed Dorothy doll and a note. To the smallest cousin in all the cousin worlds, we love you just the way you are. Love your cousins, the Ambassador, Giggles, Spice, Stone, DJ E, Star, and Swift. I knew this would be the summer I got a nickname. I felt it in my pinky. The end. Oh, such a neat book. I loved her, her um, naming of all the worlds, the block worlds, the cousin worlds, the movie worlds. I liked that. That was creative.
And of course, the illustrations were really nice. But before we go, let's read a little bit about our author and illustrator. Angela Shante is the author of the award-winning children's book, The Noisy Classroom. In addition to being a writer, she's a poet, editor, and educator. Angela has a master's in elementary education and an MFA in creative writing. She taught elementary school for 10 years and now works as an educational consultant. Angela grew up in New York City and now lives in Los Angeles, California. Keisha Morris is an illustrator and writer with a BFA in illustration from the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. Her work has been published in children's books as well as on t-shirts. She lives in Reno, Nevada. Fitting in can be hard, but standing out isn't easy either. Every summer, my cousins come to visit and celebrate my birthday. They all have cool nicknames that fit them perfectly. I'm the only cousin with that one, but this year's gonna be different. Before summer ends, I'm gonna earn my own nickname, which she did, and can feel it in my pinky. Sometimes when I have those feelings where I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to, like when I'm storytelling or when I'm playing with my daughter, what my spirit does is it vibrates my entire being. So sometimes it's like a chill and it'll be 100 degrees outside. There's no way I could ever be cold, right? Or sometimes it's just a real good jolt throughout my body that feels like a lightning bolt struck me that was full of happiness, joy, empathy, and care. And usually I get these feelings when I'm thinking of other people, taking care of people, or being of service to others which has inspired me to get my librarian degree and just grow in my ability to serve others, especially children, because they need the most service. They need the most love in our environment. My dad likes to say, one third of the population, 100% of the future. And I know that is the truth because if we don't have our kids, then who's gonna carry on our good genes, our good qualities about ourselves and the history that help makes, makes, makes the world what it is now. So I hope that this book is one you can pick up at your local library or at your bookstore because when your co the cousins come to town and you feel like maybe I felt like or our main character here felt and you just are on the outside, you don't fit in, just know it'll come and it'll happen. And when it does happen, it'll feel so much better. Keep on being you. Catch you next time. We truly enjoy sharing our adventures with you here at Ivy's Fortress. If you do too, like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, what are you doing? It is your choice, but we'll race you there. Bye.